And I am done. Okay, so I just finished up reading the second book in the Mother of Learning series, which is called Arc 2. This is by Domagoj Kermayich, and I want to give you my unedited thoughts upon finishing the book, which was just right now. Um, so I'm going to give this five out of five stars. Uh, I love this book. It's so good. Um, and it's better than the first book in every single way. Um, so before I really go too much into what I liked and didn't like about this book, I want to tell you a little bit about what this series is because I'm guessing that most of you have never heard of this before because it's not as popular as a lot of the books that I've read. So this is actually a web serial um, and a web serial is a, um, an author will put out, inf put out material for free on some sort of like timely period uh, over time. It'll take oftentimes years to get through a series if they ever get through it. Um, this is one of the completed web serials and it's highly acclaimed, uh, both in the web serial community and in the progression fantasy community. Um, if you've been watching my videos, I bring up progression fantasy a lot because it's a genre that I'm really into. And that's essentially where a character will get more powerful and more powerful as the story goes along, kind of video game style. Um, but there's no real video game elements here. It's just a character, you know, progressively getting more powerful as it goes along. Um, this, so when I say I finished the second book, um, it's not so much a book. So I've downloaded for free um, all of Mother of Learning, but it's separated into three major arcs. Um, so this was arc two. Now the first two arcs are about 25% of the book each, and the last arc is about 50% of the book. So that last one is going to be pretty gigantic because um, this book was already pretty lengthy. Um, so it's going to be uh, a big hefty read when I finally get to that last arc. And what this story mainly is about, and let me get into the story part of this, and I give the story a five out of five. Um, it's, it's a wonderful story. And this is a time loop. Uh, so think Groundhog's Day um, in a fantasy setting. So you have traditional fantasy elements, you have like magical beasts, you have a magic school, mages, uh, but you have a time loop. So this character finds himself uh, very early on in the first book that he is repeating the same month over and over and over again, but nobody else um, or virtually nobody else, um, is actually repeating the same thing. And so he is able to, to keep his memories while he's going through this magic school and get more powerful every single restart while nobody else is. And so very quickly he becomes way more powerful than he has any right to be. Now that plot line on its own is intriguing to me. Groundhog's Day was a wonderful movie when I was a kid. Um, and I've watched several different um, time jump, time loop kind of movies before. And I've always been really intrigued by that. And I'm sure there's a lot of books that have this as a concept. This is the first one that I've read. But more than just that general concept, it's this concept, um, and, and, and I'm not ruining anything by telling you this because it happens very early on in the first book. But right at the end of the time loop, a major event happens. And the main character, Zorian, is not only trying to solve the time loop, but he's trying to stop that major event from occurring. So you have these major aspects going along where he does not necessarily want to get out of this time loop, um, although he does, but he also needs to solve this major conflict before he gets out of the time loop. So he has to do them kind of simultaneously. It's a really fun story, uh, you know, and, and I love this book so much more than the first book. I gave the first book, I think, a four out of five because the story has got so much broader here. The first book, 95% of the book, if not more, probably like 98% of the book, took place literally on campus. And it felt a lot of repeating. You know, it's very good, but obviously in a time loop it's gonna repeat, but literally the same events were happening and again with small little alterations. This book is getting wildly away from that. You know, I'd say maybe 25% of this book took place in the school. The character is now going off, doing other things, um, getting deeper into the mystery of why things are going on. And I've mentioned before that I'm not a big mystery fan. I love the mystery that is involved in this book. There's so many aspects of it that have me thinking. And I, what I love about this book in the story is I keep thinking about like, what would I do if I was the main character in this story? Who would I talk to? Who would I admit this is going on to? You know, he doesn't want to talk to too many people because, you know, bad people can find him and end the loop or worse, uh, knock him out of it and, and shut his memory off. And so, you know, trying to uncover that mystery and figuring out what you would do personally is very fun. Um, I like how inventive uh, this character is and how smart this book is. It's a very intelligent book in terms of the progression that things are going along. So yeah, love this story, love every single change that was involved here. 
Uh, and I love the sprawling nature of that. I love fantasy books that get and they go in divergent paths and, they, and eventually they'll probably come back together. But I like a big sprawling epic fantasy and this book is turning into an epic fantasy by, by this um, arc too and I, and I love that for it. Now the world building, I'm also going to give the world building a 5 out of 5. I'm entranced by this world. Um, you know, there are elements here that are uh, fascinating to me. You know, that you have this underground group of intelligent spiders and a mystery going on with them that this main character is trying to solve. Um, I love that. I love interesting fantasy characters and interesting fantasy like beasts. And that is very evident in this book. There's huge groups of undead that he's trying to um, trying to avoid and, and battle at times and, and increase his rank and skills by going up against these things. Uh, but I love these different locations that I went to. It's making the world so much richer. You know, I, I criticized the world building in the first book, although it did entrance me, this one did it and then some. Uh, so yeah, the world building is, is very top tier in this book. And yeah, I, I couldn't say enough positive things about, about the direction that this book has gone from the world perspective. Now the fantasy elements, another category that I like to go over is also a five out of five. Um, and you know, it's just, I love the magic here. I love that, you know, this character is trying to become a powerful mage, but not learning like one specific, you know, I want to be a fire mage. He's trying to learn a bunch of different things. And it's so fun watching this character, you know, find these tutors and having to convince them to teach him or maybe, you know, in alterations on this to make speed up the process each time. I love the different animals that are in this book that interact with the character in these really fun ways. You know, I, I love, I won't ruin anything, but there's like these huge mythical beasts that are involved here that are critical to the story. You know, there's this whole plot line of what's going on underground and teleportation and just so many fun fantasy things that don't feel overblown. They don't feel overdone. And it's just, it's so intriguing. And I love so much about this book. Now, let's go to a couple of the things that I didn't love about this book. And one of them is the characters. Now, you know, it's weird to give a five out of five and, and criticize the characters of this book, but they're just okay. You know, some of them are not written incredibly well. They feel very cookie cutter, if you will. And, and even the main character, you know, doesn't, is not a character that I will remember as, as the years go by. When I think of the story, what I'll remember from the story is the plot. I'll remember the world but the characters just kind of blend together. They're okay. And you kind of get sick of some of them because you see them so often because the same kind of thing happens with them over and over again. There are a couple exceptions to this. Um, some of the teachers are very interesting. Um, you know, I think his sister is very interesting, but you know, in general, they're just, they're just okay. Um, you know, the, I, I also need to criticize some of the writing involved in some of the characters. You know, in this book, he's starting to admit that he's in a time loop to more people. And they're so quick to accept this as the reality that it's just like very unbelievable. You know, if somebody came to me and told me that I'm stuck in a time loop, I would think that they're insane and pretty much no amount of convincing would be able to tell me that they're not. But you know, one of the characters in the story just very quickly is like, okay, yeah, that's true. And it's, it's just kind of crazy and weird and you know, hurts the character progression here a little bit on some of the characters that are not the main character. The writing quality equally is just okay. It's like a three out of five. Um, kind of pedestrian writing. You're not gonna think of this as like the pinnacle of fantasy writing. You know, the prose is, you know, mediocre. Uh, not bad, but definitely not good. And I'm okay with that. You know, I'm, you know, out of all of my criteria, I think writing quality is probably the least important for me as a reader. I don't need every book to be Guy Gavriel K. Um, you know, or like a Patrick Rothfuss, you know, prose is a nice bonus for me, but it's not going to hurt my enjoyability of the book. I'm a plot guy. I want a good plot. I want a good world. I want good characters. Writing quality. Yeah. Just so, so, uh, you know, definitely don't read this book and expect to get wowed by anything here. You know, it's a web serial and you know, I, I, I've, I think web serials, all of the ones that I've ever read. The writing quality is the weakest part of them. And, you know, and, and maybe that's part of the aspect that they're, they're churning these stories out. They don't have the benefit oftentimes 
of going through a huge editorial process, usually no editorial process. They're doing it all on their own and they're trying to get these, they're, they're going for word count instead of perfecting what they have. And that's what makes web serials so good is their ability to churn out these stories, but the writing quality can take a hit because of that. And, and that's okay for me. Now the last thing is the most, and by far the most important thing, and it's my enjoyability. Um, and my enjoyability score is always the score of the book. And that's a five out of five. I thoroughly enjoyed my time reading this book. I think you would too. You know, if, if you like a more video gamey type of book, you're gonna love this book. If you've been intrigued by time loop stories, you're gonna love this. Like, if you liked Groundhog's Day, I think you're gonna love this story too. Um, if you like web serials, you've probably already read this because this is one of the most famous ones. And if you like progression fantasy, you're gonna love this book too. But if you're going into this book thinking, you know, I need to find another Robin Hobb to tell these wonderful character stories, you're not gonna love this book. You know, if, you, if you're going into this thinking, I need to, to write, to read something with enormous prose, you're not gonna love this book. So, you know, get into this book if those positive things I said are, are what intrigues you. It certainly is for me, and I think more people should find out about the story and go down the journey. You can read it for free on the website, and that's a nice little bonus. You know, I happen to buy things on, um, on Kindle because I prefer to read on Kindle. Um, I didn't actually buy this one because I didn't, I don't think you can buy the whole story yet, uh, but you can just download it straight to your Kindle. It's, it's very easy. But yeah, I don't like to print things out. I don't like to read on a computer, but you can if you want to. So that's my review. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, happy reading to you.